Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I extend a very warm welcome to you all in this course on sociology of sanitation. Sanitation is a brooding topic as sanitation is not simply related to human health, but it is equally related to dignity of life and human right also. In India, every society has certain norms, patterns, values, ethics related to sanitation. It has been part of our day to day life and in every part of India certain rituals, norms, traditions are associated to typical aspects of society. So, sanitation plays important role not only in Indian society, but Indian culture in our day to day life also. And so far as development of society is concerned, sanitation is not only an element, but it is a necessary aspect of development at the same time it is a goal of development also. Keeping in mind the importance of society, I have tried to develop this course of 10 hours as sociology of sanitation in that we will try to understand the social aspects of sanitation, the behavioral aspect of sanitation and which will not only be helpful for you in developing society, but developing our personality traits also. What happens after the introduction of the LPG? We have detached ourselves from certain norms, patterns, values of our society. Sanitation is important part of our day to day life. It is our behavioral pattern also through which we can help others also and in through which we can develop the society also. What happens? After the introduction of LPG that is liberalization, privatization and globalization, we have little bit derailed from our traditional norms, patterns and values. Even if our behavior is appropriate to the sanitation, it is limited to our surroundings only. We do care, but we are sticking to our oneself that well my area should be remain good we hardly bother about the peripheral area which is not directly related to our concern. In that we start behaving in a particular way. In this context, I am reminded of Irving Goffman's magnum opus, the presentation of self in everyday life. In this book, he talks about the dramaturgical analysis. In dramaturgical analysis, he talks about two stages that is back region and front region. In front region, we behave in a formal way. In back region, we behave in informal way. What happens in our day to day life these days, when we know that we are being observed by others, we behave in a particular way. So, we are very conscious while throwing any wrapper or throwing anything, we become conscious. It is required that in our back region, in our day to day life also, we should show the same type of understanding and we should indicate the same type of outlook for development of sanitation and its related aspects also. Because negligence of sanitation is not so easy. If we keep on ignoring the aspects of sanitation, it will have very bad repercussions that we cannot even imagine. While driving, we keep on watching one message on the side glass. It says and I quote, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. In the same way, repercussions of the bad sanitation is worse than it appears. So, we have to be very careful because the sanitation or the poor aspect of sanitation takes more lives with the help of different diseases than any war claims through different guns. So, from that angle sanitation is very important aspect of society 
and it is not simply related to uh, environmental science or medical science which it is generally considered to be, but it is more related to behavioral aspects and social aspects also because it is proved that sanitation is not simply related to lack of resources, but it is equally related to norms, patterns, values or if we are not aware. Even in his book Asian Drama, Gunnar Medal also talks about the fact that it is not related to financial crisis, but sanitation is ignored because of lack of education. With this background, this particular course sociology of sanitation is prepared in 10 lecture and through which it will not only helpful for understanding different aspects of sanitation, but it will be helpful for you learners all to imbibe such personality traits in you so that you can behave in a sanitation sensitive way and in that way it is not only helpful for our own family, our society, but a nation and world at large. So this sociology of sanitation course is divided into 10 lectures and these 10 lectures are important for you for understanding the overall picture of the sanitation. These 10 lectures are as follows. In first lecture which we are discussing today, we will concentrate on nature, concept and relevance of sociology of sanitation. In second aspect, in second lecture, we will discuss the historical aspects of sanitation. In third, we will discuss how does sanitation relate to caste. So, caste and sanitation, the interconnectedness will be discussed in the uh, third chapter uh, lecture, then in fourth lecture the gendered aspect of sanitation will be discussed that how sanitation is typically related to gender aspect and in the fifth lecture it will be related to socialization process, how does socialization process relate to sanitation. In the sixth lecture it will be related to environment and sanitation, is there any role of sanitation in maintaining environment? or is there any role of environment in maintaining sanitation. So, these interconnectedness will be discussed in the sixth lecture that will be in environment and sanitation. Then the seventh lecture will be devoted to public health and sanitation. How public health is related to sanitation and sanitation plays any role in public health. Then the eighth chapter we will try to understand the international scenario related to sanitation. What is the situation of sanitation at international level? Then in the ninth lecture, we will discuss different government policies and programs related to sanitation. What are those implementing agencies? What are those policy and programs? That will be discussed in ninth lecture as sanitation government policies and programs in India. And the last lecture will be dedicated to Sulav sanitation movement. What is the role of Sulav International in man managing the sanitation and how it plays important role in creating awareness in the society. With these lecture, we will try to understand certain things. So, these are certain objectives of our uh, lecture. These objectives include the course provide ample opportunity to learners to learn social aspects of sanitation. The second aspect of this objective is that it aims at sensitizing the learners to sanitation and hygiene related issues. So, you are supposed to sensitize yourself regarding sanitation and other related issues. And of course, the course helps in observing the issues of sanitation from many vantage points keeping self reflexivity and critical reflexivity. With these objectives, this course has been prepared and after completion of this course, you will be able to, so it is known as the learning outcomes. So, learning outcomes of this course will be, after completion of the course, the learners will be able to develop a relationship between real life experience and issues related to sanitation. And you will be able to understand the different aspects of sanitation then you will be able to critically analyze the policies, 
programs related to sanitation. So, with these objectives and uh, outcomes of the particular course, now start discussing about the first lecture that is sanitation and of course, what is the concept of social sanitation and concept of sociology of sanitation, then what is the nature of sociology of sanitation, how, how did it emerge and then the relevance of the sociology of sanitation that what is the benefit of understanding the sociology of sanitation. Before we start discussing sociology of sanitation, first we should learn what is the term sanitation. There are different connotations of sanitation. The different scholars from different fields, they define uh, sanitation from their angle, from different angle. WHO in its report in 2020 explains sanitation as poor sanitation reduces human well-being, social and economic development due to impacts such as anxiety, risk of sexual assault and lost opportunities for education and work. This is the explanation about poor sanitation as given by World Health Organization in 2020. Government of India in its guidelines for Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen explains sanitation as safe sanitation means promotion of safe disposal of human excreta, right use of toilet and avoiding open defecation as well as management of solid and liquid waste. With understanding of these uh, an explanation regarding sanitation, before we move to discussing what is sociology of sanitation as a background, you are supposed to understand the ground reality of Indian society and international scenario, so that you can make up your mind that okay, sanitation issue is so serious, then we should necessarily do something for the betterment of our society. So, so far as ground reality is concerned, the National Family Health Survey data, its fifth round which was conducted during 2019 and 21, it says that population living in households that used an improved sanitation facility, only 70 percent household is there in 2019-20, but it is good news that this percentage was just 49 percent in 2015-16 when National Family Health Survey fourth round was conducted. So, you can understand that even as of now, only 70 percent households in India uses the improved sanitation facility. Of course, it is matter of great concern. Again, in India, if we go by the, as we all know that Census of India 2011 is latest, because 2021 due to COVID-19 census could not be conducted. So, as of latest data Census of India 2011, in India 64 percent household in 2001 and 53 percent household in 2011 have no latrine. I mean, in 2011, 53 percent household were not having latrine and there are 7 or 8 states in Rajasthan 65 percent household without latrine, Uttar Pradesh 64 percent household without latrine, Bihar 77 percent household without latrine, Jharkhand 78 percent, Orisha 78 percent, Chhattisgarh 75 percent, Madhya Pradesh 71 percent and Tamil Nadu 52 percent. These households were not having latrines as per the data provided by Census of India 2011. If we talk about the global scenario, because as you all know that we cannot talk about uh, sanitation in compartmentalized way, what we are doing it is others are going to affected by that and what others are doing we are going to affected by that. So, as per the World Health Organization's report 2019, water, sanitation, hygiene and health, it says 829000 people die each year from diarrhea as a result of unsafe drinking water, sanitation and hand hygiene. So, 8,29,000 people die 
as you may recall we have just discussed that it takes more lives so it is not simply that it is related to dignity and human rights but number of people they die simply because of the ignorance or carelessness or because of the norms patterns values prevalent in particular society so with this background of sanitation let us move to understand what is sociology of sanitation as you all know that sociology studies society sociology studies the social relationships it studies the norms patterns values prevalent in particular society sociology is a new branch it emerged in 1838 and the father of sociology is august comte isidore august mary franquis javier comte who is popularly known as august comte is considered as father of sociology he introduced the sociology to the world and that's why is considered as father of sociology so in 1838 sociology emerged and if we talk about india in india 1919 study of sociology started formally of course it is not like that before that we were not having any knowledge regarding society before that we were not having any knowledge about the norms patterns values of the society of course but so far as formal introduction of sociology is concerned we are supposed to go by this particular information only so in sociology as we all know that it's a scientific study sociology is having one applied branch also that is also known as action sociology so action sociology is dealing with the ground reality of the society what is there the data can be used to ameliorate the situation of the society or the prevalent social structure prevalent social problems can be explained and understood by using action sociology and the theoretical understanding of sociology can be applied to understand and to ameliorate the situation and to modify the existing scenario so sociology is the branch and it's another action sociology and action sociology is related to sociology of sanitation so again sociology and sanitation this relationship is not new even in 1896 talbot marion wrote an article in american journal of sociology entitled sanitation and sociology so in 1896 he wrote an article sanitation and sociology so even during that period the relationship between sociology and sanitation used to be realized by them and of course in 1940s in 1940s sociology of sanitation emerged as a branch of medical sociology in 1940s it emerged as branch of medical sociology and why we are supposed to understand this uh, sanitation related aspects and other environment aspect in society even f g giddings clearly said society like the individual must adjust itself to a physical environment so physical environment is not only necessary for others but it is necessary for understanding society also so fd fg giddings also clearly hints at relationship between society and environmental aspect of the society so if we talk about the growth of that in india 2013 it considered as landmark in the development of sociology of sanitation if we recall the thomas kuhn's paradigm shift it is considered as paradigm shift in understanding of sociology of sanitation in 2013 what happened in 2013 in 2013 a national conference on sociology of sanitation environmental sanitation public health and social deprivation was organized by sulav international in collaboration with sulav international center for action sociology in new delhi during january 28 2013 and in that the padmavushan bindeswar pathak who is considered as pioneer in the field of sociology of sanitation he proposed the definition of sociology of sanitation and after that he started making efforts in promoting sociology of sanitation 
and after that right now in more than 20 universities sociology of sanitation is being taught as an elective course as a core paper or as a vocational course which clearly indicates its importance at university level and college level and above all the recent national education policy 2020 there are five times the term sanitation in is used in national education policy 2020. So, using five times the term sanitation in national education policy itself is indicative of the fact that how we at academic level started realizing the importance of sanitation. So, in 2013 and uh, number of books were written after that Bindeswar Pathak proposed definition of sociology of sanitation. He explains and I quote, sociology of sanitation is a scientific study to solve the problems of society in relation to sanitation, social deprivation, water, public health, hygiene, ecology, environment, poverty, gender equality, welfare of children and empowering people for sustainable development and attainment of philosophical and spiritual knowledge to lead a happy life and to make a difference in the lives of others." Unquote. In that way, it is clear that you can easily understand that the sanitation or sociology of sanitation includes a number of things it is not simply related to simply throwing garbage here or there, but it is equally related to gender issue, caste issue and other aspects of so which you cannot think of. For example, when we are thinking about sanitation, it is not simply that whether the particular area is clean or not, but a number of individuals who are associated to for example, manual scavengers, their dignity, their life their status in the society or when we talk about gender issue, how is it is related to typical to gender issue. So, number of other things are closely associated to that, that is why keeping in mind Bindeswar Patak explains the sociology of sanitation in that particular way and if we understand the different aspects of sociology of sanitation, we will be able to understand in totality the sanitation issue. So, this uh, social of sanitation will be helpful for you. And let me tell you well in advance that it is not that you are from science background or arts background or commerce background, you may belong to any background, but the understanding of social of sanitation will be equally beneficial for you. And there is no specialized prerequisite knowledge that if you do not have that particular background, you will not be able to understand. It is not like that. I have planned the lectures in such a way so that anyone can easily understand and grasp the understanding of sociology of sanitation so that it can be beneficial for the personality, for the society and the world as a whole. After discussing the concept of or a definition of sociology of sanitation, let us move to understand what are the specific nature of sociology of sanitation. So far as sociology nature of sociology of sanitation is concerned, there are different specific nature. First for example is objectivity. As you all know that objectivity is must for considering any subject as scientific study. Objectivity means it is just opposite to subjectivity. Objectivity means free from any bias, free from any ism, free from any preconceived ideas. So, objectivity when we say that it is simply remaining neutral. When you are neutral, it means what we think, what we say, what we teach, it will be applicable to each and every one. And when we say something, sociology of sanitation says something or it explains something, it teaches that you are supposed to remain neutral. You are supposed to detach yourself from any preconceived ideas or your personal identity. When we say that we are not supposed to use any preconceived ideas, it means sometimes we are already value loaded with certain ideas that okay, 
people of that area they are like that people of that group they are like that people in this way they are like that of course not all these examples are preconceived ideas they, these things are not based on any scientific uh, text any scientific research but simply for the saying of uh, for the sake of saying we declare such statements so when we say that sociology of sanitation its nature is objectivity means it is free from any bias when you say something it will be applicable to any caste any community any religious group any gender without any biasness that's why it is said that objectivity is one of the important uh, nature important part of the sociology of sanitation and it is not simply sociology of sanitation but for any scientific study objectivity is a must and sociology of sanitation fulfills this particular criterion of objectivity so this is first nature of sociology of sanitation that is objectivity second is generality of course when we say sociology of sanitation when we discuss when we plan anything it is it should not be specific to particular area particular community particular time but it is beyond that area beyond that time beyond that particular uh, locality generality means it can be applied general in nature for each and every one we may recall when emile durkheim talks about social fact he talks about generality as one of the features of social fact also means it can be general so when we say that general in sociology of sanitation means it is not specific it can easily be applied to general public without any discrimination that particular individual belongs to particular caste ethnic group class gender or locality so sociology of sanitation focuses on generality so it is its another important nature the third nature of sociology of sanitation is verifiability of course when it is objective when it is general it can be verified any time that is the beauty of the scientific study because if we are right in our process right in our methodology right in our understanding right in our doing research it can be verified 10 times the same result will come so what we are doing today if the same situation will remain it will if you keep on researching you keep on understanding the same thing for 10 times 20 times it will give the same result that is the benefit of verifiability so understanding or knowledge of sociology of sanitation can easily be verified by anyone by the same individual in any situation depending upon the norms patterns values of that particular society so sociology of sanitation can easily be verified that's why verifiability is its important component next is applied science as we all know that theoretical knowledge of course theoretical knowledge is most important because without understanding of theoretical knowledge we cannot understand the ground reality of the society but applied science it is considered because as we just discussed that it is part of the action sociology we are having the knowledge sociological knowledge theoretical knowledge then we use it in the society when we enter the society based on our knowledge based on our theoretical input we try to understand it is not necessary that the knowledge we are having at theoretical level we are simply supposed to confirm that of course not the established theory can be debunked can be falsified it is not necessary that when we enter the area we are supposed to justify the established theory even the karl popper he talks about he clearly says that debunking is a new way of understanding karl popper says debunking is a new way of understanding means we can easily debunk any fact in the society we can easily falsify in the society so we are having theoretical knowledge when we enter the society we try to use that knowledge in applied science so sociology of sanitation is applied science because it is part of action sociology based on our knowledge we enter the society 
we try to understand, we interact with the people, we try to know the limitations and their behavioral pattern in tune with their norms, patterns and values, how do they behave, how their social control are regulating, how their norms, patterns, how their socialization process help in understanding and molding their psyche. All these things, when we enter the society, we try to understand that. And it is not like that, in society we simply test our theories, but in society, for social science, society is considered as laboratory. So, through that laboratory, when we understand the emerging trends of society, because it is said that nothing is permanent except change. So, society keeps on moving, society is changing. So, when we try to understand the different aspects that this society in the same situation, it was a before 50 years different, now it is different and because of the modernity, because of the globalization effect, because of a number of other effects, society keeps on changing. So, how sanitation can be attached to all these particular factors, whether the role of economy, role of political, role of ethics and other things are playing any role in that. So, with the help of action sociology, we apply that knowledge and understanding in getting the feedback from the society, either we confirm our established theory or we reject our theory or we get, we may get some new things for our new proposal for new understanding or we und, uh, unlike the traditional things, we may start thinking in a different way regarding the sociology of sanitation. So, from that angle it is said that sociology of sanitation is an applied science. Then the next feature is empirical science. When we talk about empirical, of course, it is based on data, of course, it is based on the facts which we observe in the society. So, the different research methods, different techniques, when we empirically understand the society, the norms, the people, the way they interact, the way they behave, the way they take food, the way they wear the dress, the way they interact, the way they worship the god, goddess the way they follow the norms and patterns, all these things will be part of our empirical understanding. And while empirical understanding, we are having different theories for understanding these empirical knowledge, which will be helpful for us. And it is not like that we are supposed to enter the society with particular fixed uh, theory and only that can be applied. But every society has different norms, patterns, values and accordingly they mold the psyche, accordingly they attach particular meaning. And we are having number of theories for understanding their uh, attaching behavior to their action. For example, Max Weber talks about Verstehen. Max Weber's Verstehen is all about interpretative understanding in that Max Weber says that for understanding the ground reality, we have to place ourselves at others position to know the ground reality. Here, we are supposed to detach ourselves from the norms, patterns, values of the society. We try to understand the way they attach irrespective of the fact that what is based on common sense or what is my perception, but we are supposed to try to understand how do they attach, how do they understand, how do they interpret the meaning. Accordingly, we are supposed to understand the meaning. In the same way, we are having Harold Garfinkel's ethnomethodology or even phenomenological understanding or symbolic inter, uh, interaction is etcetera. We are having number of theories. For example, if we think that for under, uh, understanding the society, sociology of sanitation perspective, if we use that ethnomethodology, ethnomethodology talks about the using folk or using their own way, how do they attach, how do they interpret their dress, their words, their gesture, their food, accordingly we are supposed to understand. So, when we do the study of society, we are supposed to use all these theories for understanding in a very scientific way the reality of the society. So, from sociology of san sanitation angle, we can understand the issues related to sanitation, we can 
bring them in public domain and we can testify or we can suggest regarding the any uh, situation related to it which may be helpful for society. So, empirical science as an empirical science social sanitation will be helpful for understanding society and ameliorating the situation in the society. Next is cause effect relationship. Of course, when we talk about in social science cause effect relationship for example, we know that if there will be improper sanitation or there will be bad sanitation, it is going to affect the health of the society. If situation of sanitation is not good in family, it is going to adversely affect the morale and the dignity of women. If situation of sanitation is not good, it is not only harmful for health but it is harmful for status, stigma and other number of things are associated to that. So, cause effect relationship or if we think that if we provide the good atmosphere, good things related to sanitation, it will be beneficial for the society at a large. So, we can easily understand, we can easily justify, we can easily test the cause effect relationship between different aspects of the society and different aspects of the sanitation. So, with the help of sociology of sanitation, we can easily understand that how can we talk about cause effect relationship or different aspects of society which can be understood keeping in mind the sociology of sanitation perspective. The next uh, nature is related to predictability. Of course, if we are having the scientific knowledge, of course, we can easily predict anything regarding society. Predicting not simply that we will predict like the fortune teller, but of course, predicting means if the system continues, the repercussions will be that or if the good things will continue, it will affect in that. So, if through the sociology of sanitation study, we can suggest others that well, it can be predicted. How can we do the prediction? Of course, it is very easy. If we use scientific method, different techniques of sociology of sanitation, when we visit any area, any society, seeing by observing the different aspects of sanitation in that prevalent uh, in that area, different behavioral pattern of the individual, then we can predict that okay, if it continues, whether it is going to harm the society, whether it is going to destroy the social fabric, whether it is going to different the different aspects of the society or whether it is related to economy, related to polity, related to religion, all these things can easily be predicted. For example, as we discussed that if we uh, pay sufficient attention on sanitation, it is not like that we will save money on health, but we can motivate we can empower women also because they feel that well they my dignity and privacy is protected. So, say we on that basis we can predict that okay, if that for example, we are having uh, data based knowledge that because of the dropouts in the school of the girl children number of uh, problem happens. For example, if there is lack of uh, toilet facility in the school at certain after certain age girl children they drop out of the school. So, others may not consider that these two are clearly linked that drop out in the girl children and lack of sanitation facility in the school. But if we can predict that well, if we provide the sanitation facility, if we provide the uh, privacy for the girl children, we can improve the situation of the uh, in the country also. And in that way, we can get the benefit of the demographic dividend. We keep on talking about the demographic dividend. How can we get the demographic dividend if we ignore the 50 percent population means the women? So, if the young children, young girl, if they are educated, we can get the benefit of demographic dividend also. So, this is just one example. This is just the one example if girl children are educated, then it is like that, that they can concentrate on their personal life, they can contribute in the society. So, it is not related to that, but if we, it is related to senior citizen, if we provide them ample opportunity, 
it is related to children. If we in nurture in the young children sanitation sensitive behavior, then they may be tomorrow's good citizen as it is said that child is the father of man. So, if we predict in that particular way, if we start through socialization process, if we start telling them that well these are the do's and don'ts you are supposed to behave in a particular way, then perhaps in future they may behave in a particular way and that will be beneficial for the society not only from economic, political and other angle, but for the world also. So, this is another important feature of the sociology of sanitation that predictability is important aspect of this particular uh, branch. After discussing these nature of sociology of sanitation, let us discuss the relevance of sociology of sanitation means that may click in your mind that well, what are the benefits we are going to get after completing this 10 hour course. So, here are certain things. In other word, you can say these are the certain benefits or the relevance of understanding sociology of sanitation as a subject. And it is like that first, it is helpful in scientific study of sanitation. As we just discussed that well, studying anything or knowing anything is very easy, but if we prove, if we understand that by using scientific temper using different techniques related to scientific study, sanitation can be a part of. Otherwise, no one is ready to talk about sanitation. It is not uh, the term which is loved to be used by general public, be because it is not a uh, part of that. But as a part of scientific study, now if we start telling others, convincing others that sanitation is not simply related, related to toilet, not simply related to throwing here and there, but it has number of other things. So, if we say anything scientifically, anyone can easily rely, anyone can easily understand. So, social wave sanitation provides us opportunity to tell others that how social sanitation can be understood in a scientific way. And scientific way understanding is not so easy, because we have to be very careful. So, from that angle it is said that we follow all those do's and don'ts which are suggested in as a scientific method and if we follow that scientifically, we can easily understand the social of sanitation scientifically. So, this is the first benefit of that, that it provides opportunity to understand social of sanitation scientifically. Second is that it is helpful in social welfare. Of course, it is helpful in social welfare because when we talk about whether it is related to slum area, whether it is related to problem of children, whether it is related to problem of girl child, whether it is related to number of myths and conceptions related to sanitation and women, whether it is related to another issue. If we create awareness based on our scientific understanding, anyone can easily understand that well this can be applied. And for that, it is said that we can do the social welfare. How? If we create awareness, for example, if we just take simple example, if we think of manual scavengers, just imagine they are also human being, they are also supposed to stay, they are also supposed to lead the dignified life like we expect from others. But because of sanitation issue, same because of number of other rituals, certain category people or at certain period particular people, they are supposed not to uh, considered good for uh, participating actively in the society. So, if we understand that well, these are different issues, where we can understand these things that okay, if that caste untouchability, if that considering people pure, impure, considering people not good or bad or different related aspects of that, because those who are involved in sanitation uh, related jobs, they are also supposed to live the dignified life. If we, we are also doing our job in different fields, they are also doing different uh, job in their field. But the particular stigma associated to that particular job that is sanitation and of course, as we know that it was not considered that much bad even by the father of the nation Mahatma Gandhi. 
for mahatma gandhi sanitation was or cleanliness was more important than independence so on which basis we can talk about the that aspect of the society that well they are not good if they are indulged in sanitation work because it is part and parcel of our life if we consider that well this is equally good or equally important if others can do we can also do so through that step we can help the society improve the different aspects in the society so in that way after understanding the or after having the proper knowledge of social of sanitation we can do social welfare also next is it is helpful in understanding and planning of healthy society as you all know that understanding society is different aspect planning about society is different aspect understanding different aspect of society related to sanitation is that if we are having proper knowledge when we say the proper knowledge means of course when we understand the sanitation issue in the society with the help of proper knowledge proper technique and maintaining neutrality without any bias then we can easily understand the ground reality of the society then so far as planning is concerned of course based on that we can suggest the competent individual to plan those who are there in the plan and i use the term planning it is not necessary that through ngos through government or through un agencies but when we plan our family also how we can run the society how we can run the family these are the different do's and don'ts related to family so it is related to a small level also it is not like that sanitation is only at broader level but it is at a small level also we can plan we can decide that well these are the do's and don'ts which will be followed in my family and then accordingly we plan so it starts from family it may go to society then it may go in the hands of the ngos government un agencies etc so social of sanitation provides us opportunity to understand and plan the society next is it is social of sanitation helpful in changing how to look towards sanitation of course changing outlook is most important thing because when we learn how to speak how to behave how to interact with others outlook plays important role because what is there in our mind it works that's why swami vivekananda rightly said we are what our thoughts have made us so take care of what you think unquote what we think that is clearly there in our action and our action is most important part because as we all know that actions are habituated of speaking louder than the words so action speaks louder so when we change our outlook it will be implemented it will be shown to others in our behavioral pattern also so there should not be any different type of attitude different type of outlook and different type of behavior there these things should be tuned with so it will helpful social of sanitation will help us improve our change our outlook towards sanitation issue because we can understand that well if the same thing will be done by others it can be done by me also or if i am doing this type of job if others they are doing another type of job they are also human being they are also having dignity they are also having human life or the human rights why can't we should protect their human life or dignity so social of sanitation will be helpful for changing the outlook of the individual so that once we think that well this is the common outlook so it is not like that we will change only our outlook but if we start changing our outlook then when we behave in a particular way in the society in our family members other children and other members will imitate they may change their outlook accordingly when it goes beyond our family in society at large level they can also be influenced by our outlook or they may think that okay if they are behaving in that particular way we should also behave in the same particular way so changing attitude is most important aspect of life that's why different awareness programs different uh, other techniques are being used for creating awareness so creating awareness is different thing and changing our outlook 
once we imbibe the sense sanitation sensitive behavior in our personality traits, it is not only helpful for our own personality, but through our outlook it is going to influence others, others will also be thinking in that direction. So, this is another uh, benefit of the social of sanitation that it helps in changing attitude of the others. And of course, it helps in changing outlook of our those who practice the social of sanitation, those who learn. So, it is beneficial for we also and it is beneficial for others also if we talk at larger level. Next is social of sanitation is helpful in ameliorating the situation of manual scavengers. As you all know that manual scavengers, it is traditionally old system of our society. Of course, we will discuss about the manual scavengers in the third lecture when we discuss about caste and sanitation. But right now for your understanding, even today those who are manual scavengers, they use the toilets and other things with manually, they are the manual scavengers. And as per our traditional society, certain castes are associated to doing that job as per the traditional caste system. We can help the manual scavengers, we can promote them, we can motivate them, we can make them feel that yes, your life is also worth living, your life is also needs to be understood keeping in mind the human rights. So, we can think of improving the situation of manual scavengers, because others may not easily understand the relationship between sanitation and the life of particular individual. But as you all know that life of certain category of people, those who are in general term known as manual scavengers, they feel a number of problems in the society, not only from economic angle, not only from other angle, but from the angle of the social stigma. Their children, they are not able to lead the normal life. So, if we start thinking from that angle, we can do something for manual scavengers, because number of uh, jobs are being done every day by every people. So, why to consider particular job as bad, why to consider particular job as not that much bad. Work is work, if we are doing particular thing, whether I am doing particular thing that is good, others are doing that is bad, that type of mentality should not be there. So, it is another benefit of social of sanitation is that, that we may improve the lifestyle not only of the manual scavengers by telling them the others that well their life is also uh, important, but creating something in the society so that they can start leading healthy life, I mean motivating them, providing them opportunities or at least our own level. If we all think that those who will come in my contact, I will pay them sufficient respect, I will respect them. If we all start thinking that I will not follow that, I will not consider manual scavengers as bad category, I will treat them equally. It will be helpful for society not only today, but in long run it will be beneficial for the manual scavengers and in that way we will protect the lives of the second, third, fourth generation of the manual scavengers. So, this is another benefit of sociology of sanitation that it will be helpful in improving the situation of manual scavengers. Then sociology of sanitation will be helpful in maintaining and promoting culture of sanitation. Of course, these days we are talking about the culture of sanitation. Generally, uh, it is not considered as part of, but when we discuss, you can easily understand that different cultures are part of sanitation or sanitation is part and parcel of Indian culture, not only Indian culture. In every society, there are certain aspects of culture which people associate with it. So, certain good aspects are also there, certain not so good aspects, but when we talk about the society, we are supposed to consider that from which angle we are supposed to follow that culture. It means that it is not necessary that we should follow that aspects of that. So, these are certain benefits of sociology of sanitation. This is the first lecture. In remaining lecture, you will be understand in detail the remaining aspects of sociology of sanitation. While preparing this lecture, 
I have consulted certain books and I have prepared a list of certain books which will be helpful for you for understanding this lecture, the first lecture of sociology of sanitation, its concepts, its relevance and other related aspects. And I am suggesting you these books you may concern as suggested readings. One book is by Muhammad Akram that is Sociology of Sanitation, another book by H. M. Johnson, Sociology, a Systematic Introduction, another book by B. K. Nagala, Sociology of Sanitation, another book by Richard Pius, Social Action Contribution of Dr. Bindeswar Pathak, another book by same Richard Pius, Sociology of Sanitation, another book, edited book by Dr. Bindeswar Pathak, The Sociology of Sanitation, Environmental Sanitation, Public Health and Social Deprivation. Another book, Sociology of Sanitation by Asis Saxena. Another article which we mentioned initially that is by Marion Talbot, Sanitation and Sociology. And another book by Anil Vaghela, Sociology of Sanitation. I hope these books will be and articles will be helpful for you in understanding the reality of sociology of sanitation. Let me wind up this lecture that we discuss the emergence of sociology of sanitation, what is sociology of sanitation, what are the specific natures of sociology of sanitation, then what is the benefit of understanding sociology of sanitation. So with this lecture, I wind up here, thanks a lot. I am Professor A.K. Sharma and I teach sociology in IIT Kanpur. Uh, I am taking up a question, uh, what is world population crisis? Uh, world population crisis uh, refers to explosive growth of population which occurred during 1950s and 1960s. For Uh, millions of years, uh, some people estimate that perhaps man appeared on this planet earth 5 lakhs years ago. It took uh, these 5 lakhs years for world population to reach first billion in 1820 AD. And that means that the population in ancient times must have been rising at rate 0 0.000 something percent per year. Now, in 1950s and 1960s in the world, you find that population started growing at rate more than 2 percent per year. This is what is meant by population crisis. You can imagine that if a population grows or anything grows at 2 percent per year, then in about 35 years time it can double. And obviously, uh, particularly in the context of less developed countries, it had implications for poverty removal, for employment generation, for maintaining health, improving life expectancy, raising educational levels, etc., etc. The reason behind this uh, population crisis was uh, improvement in life expectancy or improvement in general health standards of populations. Uh, you may not be knowing or you will be surprised to know that about 100 years ago in our country, life expectancy means average age of death or average age of life. Newly born child was only 20 years, 68 years. Much of this improvement in 1950s and 60s. Uh, with improvement in health, improvement in life expectancy, 
average age of death growing at explosive rates and people started writing about this. So, or this, this is population crisis. And uh, uh, now one can say that the period of peak growth rate is over and from 1971 onwards in the world as well as in our country growth rate of population has started declining. 